This first experiment is directly visualized epicardial access. This procedure begins similarly to a poem, using an interject needle to raise a submucosal wheel in the esophageal wall, and then cautery to create a longitudinal mucosotomy. A pro-knife is then used to create a submucosal tunnel caudally down the esophagus and perform a myotomy in similar fashion to a poem. However, here we completely incise the esophageal wall to allow passage of the endoscope into the mediastinum. We then dissect caudally in the mediastinum using cautery to break up the areolar tissue as we move distally along the wall of the esophagus. We use methylene blue to assist with identification of the avascular planes. Next, we break into the lower mediastinum, which is largely free of areolar tissue, and navigate downwards towards the diaphragm. Here you can see the vagus nerve traveling downwards along the esophagus. After we reach the diaphragm, we retroflex the endoscope to visualize the pericardium. Here, you can see the epicardial vessels within the pericardium. We then use an interject needle to carefully access the pericardial space and inject it with contrast. You can see transient tachyarrhythmias were encountered during access, but these arrhythmias quickly resolved without any treatment. We then insufflate the pericardium with CO2, and you can see the pericardium lift off of the heart with fluoroscopy. We extend the opening in the pericardium next with cautery after it has been safely lifted off the heart and insert a jag wire into the pericardial space. This is well tolerated without any arrhythmias. Here you can see the wire positioning under fluoroscopy guidance. We then pass a catheter over the wire into the pericardial space to establish catheter-based epicardial access. We then performed a pericardial window, opening the pericardium in the left pleura with a pro-knife to allow for communication between the pericardial space and pleural space, which facilitates drainage of pericardial effusions. This is easily accomplished in the same surgical space. Bleeding was encountered during the dissection, which was easily controlled with cautery. This is important to demonstrate, as even incidental bleeding that may be encountered can be safely controlled endoscopically.
This fluoroscopic video of the pericardium after completion of the pericardial window shows no residual CO2 or contrast that's left within the pericardial space. The second experiment we conducted was EUS-guided epicardial access. This method precludes the use of dissection through the esophageal wall and instead directly accesses the epicardial space. Using a curved linear EUS scope, we identified an area of the left ventricle in close proximity to the esophagus. We used Doppler to identify an area free of epicardial vessels in order to avoid injury and hemopericardium. We carefully advanced an FNA needle into the pericardial space, seen here with the arrow, confirming positioning by injecting contrast under fluoroscopic guidance. We then advanced a wire into the pericardial space and passed a Jagtome ERCP catheter over the wire in order to obtain EUS-guided epicardial access.